Computing is really for everybody. Um, it's not just for the people who go into computing as their profession, as their major. I really do believe that computer science offers something, a, a set of powerful ideas that anybody can use, any professional. Um, and I think that it's really important for us to figure out how to make that work. So when I was in high school, uh, we had computer science in my high school, several classes, which was really uh, pretty wonderful. Um, m one of my teachers in high school was approached about teaching a community education, an adult education enrichment course about computers. Um, and she didn't want to, but she said, I've got this pretty bright student, can he try? So uh, I was 17 when I first started teaching my first uh, adult education computer science course. Um, I really loved it. The course went pretty well. I continued to teach throughout undergraduate. Mark is a radical in the approach and the ideas he has. And, and he is really an inspiration. I was just so delighted that he was uh, nominated and, and has won this award. He really has changed the nature of the way people in the classroom start to view computing and to engage people of younger age groups to start to think about computing as a possible career. It's really, really hard to uh, measure the contribution he, he has made and uh, really will make in the future when these students start to come into university programs. In 1999, Georgia Tech decided that everybody who walked in the door had to take a course in computer science. And for the first four years that we had this requirement, everybody had to take the same course. There was only one course that met that requirement. And we tried a variety of different approaches. In general, the course went pretty well. We had about a 78% success rate, which is pretty good as intro courses go. Um, unless you look at architecture, liberal arts, and management students, less than half of them graduated each semester. So uh, we decided at some point that the one course didn't fit all. It didn't work to have only one course for the requirement. So we decided to create three different courses. One for computer science still, that was much the same course. One for engineers, which we, uh, you, for which we use MATLAB, which was particularly nice to see Clave get the award last night. Um, and then I got the third group. Uh, so, and I was tasked with the challenge of, so what does computer science matter to a liberal arts architecture and management student? And our insight was that for these students, the computer is less a tool for calculation as it is for communication. What these people want to do is use the computer to create videos and to create images and to create graphs and to tell stories about data, not necessarily to crunch the data. Mark has really revolutionized the way we teach undergraduate education in computer science. Before, computer science was taught in a very dry way that was okay for computer scientists, but didn't really engage with the rest of the professional world. Mark changed that. He came up with media computation, where students look at real applications, and Mark often focuses on video and voice and sounds, where students create with, with media, and in the process, learn a great deal of computer science. So I had a lot of interest in computer music and I'd been playing with a computer music class and realized that the algorithms involved in computer music were actually pretty simple. And then I started talking to people about how we do image processing, discovered a lot of those algorithms were pretty simple too. So I put together an intro computer science course that was about manipulating the pixels in a picture to do Photoshop-like effects, the samples in a sound in order to be able to do things like create echoes or reverse sounds or even generate new kinds of sounds like a, like a synthesizer, um, to manipulate frames in a video, to manipulate individual characters in a web page. So the idea is about levels of abstraction and programming with a focus on communicating. Here's another one that you might not think about. Graphics designers, people who mostly ignore science and mathematics when they're going through school. Um, a lot of graphics designers, as I'm going to argue for, to you in a few minutes, are learning how to code, either to automate processes in Photoshop and GIMP, or else to put things on the web. Um, these are self-depictions of graphics designers from a graphics designer website focused on coding. Those things exist now.
my wife, Barbara Erickson, is the, the part of the team that really focuses on the K through 12. Um, she's now taught high school teachers at 38% of all high schools in Georgia. 38% of high schools in Georgia have somebody that Barbara has given professional development to. My special thanks to my wife, co-author and partner, Barbara Erickson. I invented media computation, but Barbara's the computer scientist who made it good. So Georgia Computes was an outgrowth of our media computation effort. Um, the National Science Foundation had started a program in broadening participation in computing. And their idea was, how do we create a, a form of computing that will help to draw in uh, more women, more underrepresented minorities, more disabled students, more people that were currently not represented in computer science. And their argument um, is a very pragmatic one. We have a labor shortage in computing. We need a lot more people to join the computing area. And there's a, the majority of the population, by some counts, is not being well represented in computer science. So for example, so few women go into computer science. Well, that's half the population that we're not really addressing. How could we recruit from those, from that population? How could we engage those students more into our field? The Undergraduate Teaching Award really is valuable to academics and to teachers because of the way of which it starts to highlight you as somebody who's innovative in the, in the classroom. So it's about face-to-face -face change and that change culture is really starting to flag you up as somebody that people should take notice of. I'm really, I still believe in this vision of the computer as a new way of expressing yourself and getting new ideas. Uh, I mean, the, we write not just to communicate to other people, but to influence the way we think. Um, the act of writing, reading what we wrote, helps us to rethink ideas. How much even more powerful is it when, when what you're writing actually comes to life? that when you write a program, you actually can then activate that program, that you can have the computer simulate. Um, that's a really powerful idea. And that vision of the, uh, of the computer as a tool for expression and reflection and developing new ideas, I think that goes way beyond just developing software. Thank you to the Computer Society for this award, which recognizes my work in support of their vision of putting computing in the hands of everyone, not just those who major in computing. Thank you all very much. It's important that we recognize our educators in the Computer Society, and Mark Guzdial represents the best of the best. The educators look at the whole pipeline of education from our youngest children up through graduate degrees, and they really focus on how to create the next set of learners to create innovations within society. Mark is representative of that group that have changed the way we think about um, not just teaching but learning environments. There are things that we can do to make computer science more inviting, uh, be able to engage more students, be able to recruit more students. And that's really where more of my focus is. What can we do to make things better?